Hello all, uh, I'm gonna play first tonight and uh, then I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and then talk about uh, this deconstruction movement that's kind of happening in the church and in Christian circles. So uh, I'll play first and then I'm, I'm gonna read some scripture and then we'll, I wanna discuss uh, this subject. Okay, 1 John 2, warnings against denying the Son. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us, for if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but, but, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the Son and in the Father, and this is what he promised us, eternal life. I am writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has taught you, remain in him. All right. I want to go back here. All right, Luke 17. One day Jesus said to his disciples, there will always be temptations to sin, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. So watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. Okay. Um, so that was talking about people who uh, believed the first scripture about people who believed and then uh, left, they left the faith. 
And the reason I'm uh, uh, reading those scriptures and talking about this is because of this so-called de deconstruction movement in the church, in Christian circles. Um, another famous Christian rock star uh, has come out and saying that uh, he's deconstructing his face, his faith, I mean, sorry, not his face, his faith. Uh, Kevin Max from uh, DC Talk, very famous Christian rock singer, uh, is deconstructing his faith. Now, I've seen a couple of articles about this and read it about him. I don't know Kevin Max personally, uh, but I feel, but I do know the Christian rock scene because I was a part of it uh, about 12, 15 years before he or DC Talk was in it. I, I toured in a Christian rock band with uh, the artist Steve Taylor in the 80s, from 82 up through about 88. I know the Christian rock scene. I did all those festivals, you know, the Creation Fest, uh, you know, Ichthus Festival, um, you know, all, all of those. We did all of those. Green Belt um, and uh, the one in Chicago, Cornerstone. Uh, I played at all of those Christian rock festivals back in the 80s for several years. We did them several years in a row. Some of you know, may know that history about me. So I know the Christian rock scene pretty well uh, because I did it in those years for about six and a half, almost seven years. And I don't know Kevin Max personally. I don't know exactly where his heart is at. All I can just take from what he's saying and that he's, he said, I'm deconstructing my faith. I'm deconstructing to reconstruct. And, uh, you know, I don't quite know what he means by that. Now, I, I take that maybe a couple of ways from him and those in this deconstruction movement. He's deconstructing his faith, he says, to reconstruct it. Okay, well, that's fine. But uh, he also talks about, uh, I'm deconstructing from evangelical Christianity. He's claiming to be an ex Evangelical, ex-evangelical. Uh, I can kind of understand that, to be honest. I mean, I, I played in a Christian rock band. Uh, I played music in, in evangelical churches for 20 straight years after I, would, I toured in a Christian rock band. And after my years of touring with Promise Keepers, I, uh, I played in evangelical churches. And to be honest, I didn't fit in too well there. I didn't fit in real good with that culture. You know, and uh, the meetings I had to go to and and just the the whole evangelical uh, church structure, I really struggled with. It was a struggle for me because I'm a player. I'm a musician. You know, I'm not a, a you know, I'm not good. I'm not good at organizational skills and that sort of thing. So I had I had trouble fitting into the evangelical church structure, you know, leadership. Uh, that was a very, that was a struggle for me. And frankly, you know, uh, I left some churches, you know, because of those, those things, two of them. And so I kind of get the, you know, deconstructing from evangelical churches or Christianity. I, I understand that. I get that. But, you know, the difference between me, though, is that, uh, you know, I, I wasn't born in evangelical Christianity, um, I was born into the Catholic Church, baptized as an infant, first Holy Communion, uh, you know, uh, the uh, confirmation at about, what, nine, ten years old, you know, and my mom did all of that. I was baptized as a, as a baby, and uh, so I grew up in the Catholic Church, and frankly, I did some re deconstructing from the Catholic Church as well, because I became disillusioned, to be quite honest, as a teenager, I got pretty disillusioned with the Catholic Church because I saw what was going on. I, I knew there were there were priests who were uh, homosexuals that were, you know, having sex with little boys and stuff like that. I knew that was going on. I think it probably even happened in my Catholic parish, to be honest, because our priest there just left suddenly and nobody knew why. Well, I'm pretty sure I know why. 
he was moved on from that parish where I grew up in Colorado and uh, the hierarchy, the bishops, they probably just moved him to another church somewhere. Anyway, I became dis disillusioned with the Catholic Church. Uh, so I, I can understand disillusionment. If that's what Kevin Max is talking about, I, I get that. I understand it. Disillusionment with, with organized church, organized religion. You know, I was a Christian rocker just like him. I was in that same subculture, the Christian rock touring in the, the festivals and, and in all of the, the Christian colleges back in the 80s. You know, uh, when I was with Steve Taylor, we played at, you know, uh, a lot of the same Christian colleges that I'm sure DC Talk did. And uh, I, I knew that there was this Christian subculture. So, but the difference between me, though, and, and uh, people like Kevin Max is this uh, and others. I, I didn't grow up in that evangelical church thing. I didn't even know about it. I didn't even know what Christian music was until I joined Steve Taylor's band. And then I went on the road. We got signed and went on the road and we traveled all over the world. We played in, in Australia and Europe five times all over America, all over Canada. We even played in South America. You know, we did that whole circuit, Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, uh, you know, Knott's or uh, uh, Great America, you know. We did all those amusement parks all over the country. They're Christian nights, so I understand that culture. But here's what happened to me that might be different than somebody, somebody like a Kevin Max who I think grew up in that Christian subculture, the evangelical church thing. I didn't, I got saved. About 1986, I got saved and became born again. I became a born again Christian. I got saved. I confessed Christ. I wasn't really saved previous to that. I, I had grown up in a church culture, Catholic church culture, but I wasn't saved. I didn't know Jesus Christ personally. I didn't know Bible. And then suddenly I was thrown into a Christian rock band, you know, with these bunch of Protestant musicians. And, you know, it's, it was a whole new world to me because I grew up in a, in, in a Catholic setting, you know, and, and a not very strong Catholic setting, either pretty nominal Catholic setting. You know, I, I went to church maybe once in a while. My parents didn't go to church much. Uh, my mom tried to get us to go to church, but we barely went. And anyway, uh, but I got saved. I, I became born again. I confess Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I'm still saying that today. Jesus Christ is the only one this knee bows to. I'm, I'm a saved, born-again Christian today, and that happened in 1986. And so... The difference between me and somebody like a Kevin Max or maybe some of these other Christian rockers that are deconstructing their faith, uh, I have to wonder if, if maybe they grew up in a church culture and perhaps never got saved. Maybe they were never saved. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I don't know his heart or any of these other people that are saying, talking about deconstruction. But all I got to say is this, is this, if, if you're truly constructed by the Lord, if your faith is constructed by God, how can you deconstruct it? And what are you deconstructing to? And I, I, I have a warning for you who are deconstructing your faith in the public eye. You better be very, very careful because like Kevin Max or others, there's other Christian rockers other Christian uh, artists, musicians that have deconstructed their faith in the public eye, and some of them has, have lost their faith. There are some in this deconstruction movement that have completely lost their faith and are denying Christ. And that's the difference between me and those people. Jesus Christ is still my Lord and Savior. And I don't know about these other people. I don't, like I said, I don't know Kevin Max personally. But you better beware, those of you who are doing this deconstruction, and you got a lot of fans, 
you got thousands and thousands of, of fans who are young Christians. And like that scripture says, uh, if you deconstruct your faith to the point that you lose your faith, then you and, and you're dragging all these young Christians, these young, very young, early believers with you. Uh, you better watch yourself. Uh, that's all I got to tell you, because you're dragging them into your your faithlessness. And uh, you're going to have to answer to a powerful God if that's where you're headed. Now, I don't want to be harsh here, but but if you're deconstructing your faith to the point that you're going to lose your faith and you're dragging tons of your super fans with you, uh, fair warning, my friend, uh, because you, you will answer to a powerful God. And like the scripture says, it'd be better for you if a millstone, millstone, a gigantic rock, a thousand pound rock was hung around your neck and you were thrown into the ocean than what would happen to you if you trip up any children of God, young believers, you know, and trip their faith up as well. So you better watch yourself. That's all I got to say. And uh, I understand the deconstructing thing. I understand disillusionment with the church. I get it. I've been there. But I haven't lost my faith in Jesus. And I hope for your sake, people like Kevin Max and others, these others that are doing this, famous people, that you haven't lost your faith. And, and if you are, then don't take these people with you. So that's all I wanted to say tonight. I'll play again, and then that'll be it. <laughs> Have a good evening.